Within all of medicine, I think this is one of the most explosive areas. Um, and so we're blessed and cursed to have a large number of new procedures and new devices. Um, the blessing is obviously that it allows us to improve what we can do for patients and improve patient outcomes. And the curse is we don't have enough data. So I think initially, uh, in a specialty that's new or in a device that's new, it's natural to have a small case report to show what can be done with a device by an individual at a center. Um, and I think one of the things that we see in our specialty now is pushing past that to um, multi-center prospective data, sometimes when possible with a control group in a randomized trial that really helps us to advance the clinical science so that we can give patients not only uh, the experience that we have, but also some, some real scientific grounding as far as what the benefits and risks of various options are for them. Um, there's always this balance between the experience of an individual and the individual patient, uh, the individualization of the medicine and what can be done for them, uh, and, and learning from large cohorts of patients and, and, and clinical research. So as a surgeon, I can tell you the most important part of any surgery is the selection of who should have that surgery and who shouldn't. So there's no question, sometimes it should stop you from doing the procedures because the right answer is not always a procedure. Some patients are better managed with medical therapy or conservative therapy. Um, but uh, uh, we need to be able to teach not only technique, but patient selection uh, to have the, the lowest morbidity and mortality and the best outcomes for patients. There's a conflict in that interventional neuroradiologists or vascular neurosurgeons are highly subspecialized, highly trained people. And so that sort of puts them at the end of a chain of the patient encounter where we're most accustomed to a patient already having seen perhaps a general practitioner or a nurse practitioner, a physician extendant, extender, an emergency room provider, imaging, all of this having been done before the patient eventually is referred to us. But we know that when someone has an emergency large vessel occlusion, they've blocked a carotid artery, a middle cerebral artery, a basilar artery. They lose um, about two million neurons a minute. They lose uh, three, weeks, three weeks of functional life a minute. And so I think our expertise, our specialty, needs to become more involved in the triage and, and uh, identification of patients faster because um, you know, the brain is simply too important to, to lose that time and lose that potential to give someone back time in their life to do the things they love doing. What, what do the specialists need to be ready to do that? Is it a more training, a different kind of uh, accreditation? Is something missing in what, what, you, what you're teaching now that needs to be added to? All of the above, but certainly one of the things we need to learn, uh, one of the ways we need to learn is to learn from each other. And that's one of the real emphases of LINK, is that we can communicate what's done in Sao Paulo, in Tehran, here in Paris, in Toronto, and you may see something that someone else is doing or hear something they're doing in their program, perhaps uh, a new device that allows identification of stroke patients quicker, or a mobile stroke unit, or a stroke specialized emergency department, and that may be something that you can bring back to your center and provide an incremental improvement that allows a few more patients to have a good outcome.